today. So thank you for joining our first online event this year. 2020 kickoff startup pitch with MDEC, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. I'm Akiko from Fukuoka City Global Startup Center. Today's MC, uh, we have Mumu, the director of Global Startup Center, Yoshi at our GSC desk. Uh, before we start the event, I would like to ask one thing. Uh, please keep your microphone mute and turn off the video. During the event, uh, we post uh, during the event, and we posted a link for the question, uh, the feedback for this event. So it would be highly appreciated if you could give us your feedback before you leave this event. So let me start with sharing today's rundown briefly. Oh, sorry, taking some time. Okay, so today, uh, firstly, we will explain general information of Fukuoka City Global Startup Center and after MDEC. Then after our introduction, pitching section for us. Today we will welcome this journal, uh, Graphico Asia, Smart Peep. So I'd like to start with the introduction of Global Startup Center. The Fuka City Global Startup Center is run by the city government, and we are the contact window and the executive unit for foreign startups and entrepreneurs. Our motto is a part of your team. Once you contact us, we are your first team member in Japan. We work with you, we execute projects together. Even more, we sometimes do tasks on behalf of you. Uh, as you can see, our services are very wide range and available at any stage of your business. Uh, what I like to emphasize here is our unique business matching. We have strong connection with not only startups, but also big companies. Moreover, we have good relationship with the local government and public organization as well. So we can arrange very specific business matchings, not just introducing each other. And this business matching service is available for any startups. That means even if you are, you are not in Japan, you're in Malaysia, uh, without having a company here in Japan. Moreover, without coming to Japan, we are happy to offer our networks for you to find your potential partners. So let me introduce some of merits of starting business from Fukuoka when you expand your business in the Japanese market. The first point is safety. Unlike the main big cities in Tokyo, like to, uh, big cities in Japan, like Tokyo and Osaka, uh, Fukuoka City is located on the side of Japan Sea. And we have less earthquakes, uh, which means we could say our location is safer than such big cities ge geographically. That's why big companies have data centers in Fukuoka. The second point is our location. Uh, another, it is another geographic advantage of us. It's the closest uh, distance with neighbor countries. Once you set up the business here, you have the market not only in Japan, it can be extended to Korea, Taiwan, and China. When you fly to Tokyo from Fukuoka, uh, it takes about two hours. And when we fly to Korea, Shanghai, Taipei, it also takes us uh, the two hours, within two hours. So Fukuoka can be the gateway to Asian market as well. The next advantage is our startup ecosystem. Uh, Fukuoka is gradually known as the most popular startup city in, in Japan, since we have been building our unique startup ecosystem. 
We have many supports from uh, we have many startups. Uh, we have many support from startups, and you can find them once you visit our startup hub called Fukuoka Growth Next. It's where global a uh, global startup center is located. Fukuoka City has a project that supports implementation of POC in the city as well. The last point should be the uh, compactness, quality of life, and compactness of the city. Compared to the big cities like Osaka, Tokyo, Fukuoka is smaller, but this is a big advantage of us. It's not crowded, less competitive, and because of that, we have strong communities. Once you get into the community, it's easier to make networks. Another point should be the cheap living cost compared to other big cities. And it's important for startups to save your living cost so that you can spend more for developing your business. You can see how compact our city is. Uh, 10 minutes from airport to city center and very quick access to the beach as well. So I would like to remark this point as well. We are currently selected by the Japanese government as one of the candidate cities for comp competing to become Japan's next international financial, financial center. The Japanese government is aware of not only our achievement in the startup field, but also the potential as a global city. Fukuoka City has 15 partner institutions in 11 countries. We signed MOU to provide mutual support for startups in the region. However, signing MOU doesn't limit our cooperation. Like today, we are happy to cooperate with institutions outside of our MOU, like MDEC. So we also uh, have the startup visa. The startup visa is the uh, the visa for the uh, foreign entrepreneurs and startups, they are willing to start business in Fukuoka. You will have six months to uh, 12 months to settle down and prepare for starting business in Japan. So these are the, some cases uh, they use startup visa to come to Fukuoka. We have Canadian startups. They use 3D scan technology to offer the experience of mixed reality. Uh, they have collaboration with Fukuoka City Museum. The other, uh, another case is Smarty. It's from uh, China. They are developing smart chips with AI voice recognition that en enable IoT without Bluetooth no Wi-Fi. So let me introduce our business matching. So Desk Me, this is a Finnish startup to develop desk reservation system for co-working space and offices. With their services, you can easily find the working desk and the meeting room in your office on your smartphone or on your laptop. We connected Desk Me with JL Kyushu, <coughs> the, one of the biggest uh, railway company in the Kyushu Island. We introduced this myth when they opened a brand new co-working space in the Hakata station, which is the Fukuoka City's main entrance station. Wow. Not only introducing, uh, we supported the initial setting on behalf of uh, Desk Me, and this co-working space installed the system as a POC. They are uh, gaining local feedbacks and networks through this POC. The next case is Siren from Estonia. Uh, we got to know this with Siren in the Fukuoka's online event 2020. Uh, Siren is manufacturing small booth offices with the best sound reduction technology in the world. We connected them with a potential partner that is one of the one of the largest office, part, office furniture companies in Japan. Actually, this company has similar uh, products as Siren. However, the demand for such small offices, small phone booths, is getting high in Japan these days. So therefore, we propose them to have Siren as another product lineup. The company agreed to purchase sample from Siren. And moreover, they showed more interest in collaboration after seeing the samples. 
and they just signed NDA for further collaboration. So these are the a few cases for the startup visa and also business matching achievement we did. So Fukuoka is the place you can start easy and start first. Uh, if you're interested in business expansion in the Japanese market, we are happy to work with you. So please contact us. So this is a... Uh, okay, so it was the introduction of Global Startup Center. So I would like to introduce Jill from MDEC. Are you here? Hi. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, um, my colleague, uh, Ryan. So he'll be introducing about the Malaysia uh, ecosystem. Yes. 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 Over yes. to you, Ryan. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, thank you to our friends from Fukuoka GSC. Uh, Ohio gozaimasu. Very good afternoon to everyone uh, that's, uh, that joined us in this session. Uh, so my name is Ryan. Uh, on behalf of uh, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation or MDEC or MDEC for short, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone again. Uh, our my main responsibility within the organization is very similar to what Fukuoka is doing, which is um, uh, helping MDEC to create bridges, pathways, and connections to other ecosystems uh, and other organizations around the world. And through these pathways and bridge to um, help our companies to be able to mutually um, create business together, uh, create business opportunities together, uh, and to jointly innovate solutions and technology and products and go to market together. Um, allow me to run through very quickly um, some slides just to take you through uh, what our organization does. And uh, you know, if you have any questions later, uh, our email is there, so you can just drop us an email and we'll be happy to um, address some of the questions that you have raised. All right, so um, very similarly again to what uh, Fukuoka presented, uh, Malaysia, we like to position and, and think of ourselves as a digital hub of Southeast Asia or ASEAN, right? Uh, and the reason why is because um, of location, right? So from a from a geographical location perspective, uh, Malaysia is almost right in the middle of Southeast Asia, and this is this is crucial because Southeast Asia is one of the fastest growing uh, economic regions in the world. Right? By world population, uh, we are third behind uh, China and India. Uh, we have got the world's third largest workforce and one of the fastest growing internet economies in the world. Um, and you will see that you know, despite the pandemic, uh, uh, the internet economy has continued to grow both in 2020 and 2021. Uh, you know, 2021 itself uh, uh, recorded about 174 billion US dollars uh, in terms of GMV within the internet economy. And the projection is that 2025, uh, this would uh, almost double to, to uh, 360 billion US dollars. Right? Uh, so that, that is a lot of head, headroom for growth uh, in this key sector. Uh, and, and you know, we're adding a lot more internet users uh, every year. So the total population of Southeast Asia is about 700 million. Uh, I think in terms of um, growth of internet users, that's also picking up pace very quickly. Uh, and, and Malaysia is right in the middle of everything. It's right in the middle of all the action. Uh, by flight, we are roughly about four hours from any country in Southeast Asia. And if we extend that bubble a little bit further, uh, I think within four hours, we can also reach uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and parts of China as well. Right? And, and even to, uh, I would say, I think part of South Asia also within the four hour window. So from that perspective, uh, I think uh, that is why you know, we see a lot of um, uh, foreign companies also moving into Malaysia to provide uh, things like shared services, global support services out of Malaysia also. Uh, and, and we want to utilize this position and uh, for any company uh, from Japan that is, uh, that is interested to explore Southeast Asia, uh, we do invite you to, to come and explore opportunities here through Malaysia. Uh, and you know, going beyond that, right? so why Malaysia? Uh, I think when you look at some of the rankings that has been compiled by international agencies, uh, we are quite favorable. Uh, particularly if we if we look at within the Southeast Asian uh, region, right? 
uh, you know, certain organizations has also ranked uh, Malaysia as one of the best countries to invest and do business in. Uh, when we look at the um, uh, rankings that has been released by World Bank in terms of ease of doing business, uh, we are globally, I think, uh, 12th in the world uh, and number two in Southeast Asia. Uh, when we look at things like uh, Innovation Index, uh, we are again second in Southeast Asia. Uh, and, and competitiveness also uh, second in Southeast Asia. Uh, one interesting thing to highlight is uh, INSEAD's Global Talent uh, Index. Uh, we are number one when it comes to upper middle income countries in the world. Uh, and overall, within uh, the global um, uh, global landscape, we are 26 worldwide. Yeah, so that, that I think, uh, uh, speaks well of some of the investments that the country has made in terms of talent development and also in terms of uh, developing the local um, <clears throat> hardware infrastructure and software infrastructure that we have in terms of supporting businesses. Um, <clears throat> one of the key areas that, that Malaysia has been focusing on in the last few years has been building up uh, the global services or shared services uh, business. Uh, and we are, again, you know, third in the world, uh, just behind the uh, Philippines and, and India when it comes to shared services. So uh, these are some of the areas that we thrive in, uh, and we'll be happy to share more of these uh, uh, data points with you as well. Uh, a look back in terms of the journey uh, when it comes to, to our digital uh, ecosystem and our IT ecosystem. Um, our organization MDEC and DEC uh, was started back in 1996. And the reason for this is because the, the government wanted to transform the economy of Malaysia from a, a very agriculture and, and manufacturing based economy to one that's based on, on information and knowledge. So hence the focus on digital and IT. Uh, and that's when we were started in 1996 to support and develop the local industry. Uh, and with that, uh, all sorts of different incentives and programs were, were brought in. Uh, key, key, key program uh, as one of it is the MSE program, which uh, uh, the main uh, benefit of that is providing uh, tax incentives to companies that qualify uh, and, and to be able to enjoy a 10-year tax holiday uh, on qualified activities. Um, so as you see, throughout the 25 years, we've been able to, number one, grow local companies, um, so much so that some of our local companies have become uh, world leaders in certain areas. Uh, we've also been able to attract uh, foreign companies into Malaysia uh, uh, and setting up the operations here, um, some of which uh, uh, a Japanese audience may be familiar with. Uh, NTT uh, has a huge data center here in Malaysia. In fact, they are the first foreign company to come in together with MDAC uh, uh, in, back in 1996 to set up. Uh, a data center in Malaysia. And from there, they've expanded, and today they've got five uh, large data center sites in Malaysia. Uh, other, other Japanese companies, uh, Bandai Namco, uh, Sony, uh, has uh, very big uh, uh, games development studios uh, in Malaysia, uh, providing, providing games development uh, uh, you know, internally for their larger organization. So that's another area that we are also looking to grow, uh, the animation and games uh, ecosystem. Uh, moving beyond, of course, uh, 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 we have vision on how to grow this uh, uh, sector, and uh, I'll touch uh, briefly on this in my subsequent slides. Uh, one of the things that was launched uh, last year is what we call the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint, uh, which is a blueprint from the government that sets out uh, the vision uh, for the digital economy in the IT sector uh, to 2030. Uh, one of the, uh, some of the key objectives highlighted here is to have five unicorns in Malaysia by 2025. Uh, happy to say that last year we, we had one already uh, with Carson, uh, Southeast Asia's largest car trading platform. Uh, and hopefully within the next few years, there'll be more of such um, uh, unicorns out of Malaysia uh, uh, in the next few years. Uh, together with that, to encourage entrepreneurship, to, to get more um, startups uh, to come up with innovative uh, solutions uh, and to transform the socio-economic landscape. So to have 5,000 of these startups by 2025, uh, and then together with that, to encourage IP creation. So I mentioned just now about games uh, and animation development. Right? So uh, within Southeast Asia also, you will find that um, Malaysia is unique in that we have created and exported a lot of our own homegrown uh, animation content uh, uh, into, the, into the international market. So there is a, a focus to grow and develop this further. Uh, and alongside that, to also grow and develop uh, our own local uh, games development. So not just foreign companies to come in and set up game studios here, not just providing games, uh, game development services, but also to have local studios creating our lo own local content. Okay. Uh, so creating new IP, uh, more uh, higher growth rate in terms of the content, and also at the same time, uh, fintech is a, is a very important area. So 
uh, we are running a fintech accelerator program that we call fintech booster which is meant to help companies identify uh, regulation uh, regulatory uh, um, uh, gaps that they need to fill and then to work with uh, uh, tech partners to find a business model for them uh, to go to market with uh, so these are just some of the snapshots that we have captured within the, the digital economy blueprint uh, and you know, within the larger blueprint there are many other uh, goals and aspirations uh, that I have not highlighted here yet. Um, when it comes to MDEC, uh, there's three things that, that, that we focus on. Number one is about talent development. So you know, we can have all the companies in the world come here, but if we don't have the right talent, then it's meaningless. right? So we work with universities, schools, and the Ministry of Education in terms of rolling up uh, uh, the right syllabus to develop digital skill sets and also working with existing working professionals to reskill and upskill themselves for the digital economy. Then we look at businesses. How do we enable our small medium enterprises uh, to adapt to the new digital economy? So helping them in terms of digital transformation uh, and automation for the digital sector. And then at the same time, uh, where we come in is to work with the startups and help them to grow their business um, uh, uh, in this new economy. So that's where our, our connections with agencies such as uh, Fukuoka comes in to help them to expand their business into new markets. And then third thing is investments uh, uh, in the digital sector. So we want to continue to attract foreign investments into these key areas such as data centers, uh, esports, animation, games development, software development and so on. Uh, the other areas that we, we, again zooming in into investments, some of the key areas that we want to look at uh, would be you know the five focus tech areas: AI, cloud, data center, cybersecurity, content, uh, 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 serving the five key industries that we have identified as game changers, which would be agriculture, uh, health and medical, um, Islamic uh, fintech and fintech, uh, smart cities and education. Uh, of course, with an eye on emerging technologies uh, such as uh, AR, VR, robotics, blockchain, drones, and edge computing. Uh, I've mentioned also uh, the focus that we had on uh, global business services. So these are areas that we want to continue to innovate in. So it's not just about putting in bodies, but how do we automate the whole uh, global business services also. Uh, the support that we provide, uh, again, very similar to what Fukuoka has uh, as a startup visa. We have something that we call the Malaysia Tech Entrepreneur Program, which is a special visa uh, that's targeted towards uh, uh, entrepreneurs, founders and co-founders. So there's two levels. Uh, one, on the right hand side for established entrepreneurs, uh, meaning to say that you know, you've, the person already has experience in terms of running a business or, or founded a company. Uh, they are invited to, to apply under the established entrepreneur track, uh, which gives them a five-year visa that is renewable. And with this visa, they can bring in their dependents, uh, meaning the family, into Malaysia also. Uh, so as long as they can prove to show that you know, they have a track record uh, uh, running a startup uh, and then you know, providing uh, audited uh, reports, uh, financial reports of the company and so on, uh, together with the business plan, uh, then we will be able to assist them on this visa. For entrepreneurs that do not have an experience, uh, we, we have what we call the uh, new entrepreneur visa or the PVP visa, uh, which provides a one year visa that's renewable for another year for, for these um, uh, uh, talent to come in to explore the market and understand uh, the Malaysian market. Uh, amongst other things also, uh, we have a team that assists local startups on funding. So we are connected to uh, both the local and international uh, VCs uh, providing such support uh, uh, when it comes to fundraising. Uh, we have also um, support that we provide also if companies need to bring in foreign talent into Malaysia. Uh, uh, specifically within uh, ICT and digital sector, so we are able to assist and facilitate that. And then lastly, uh, we have what we call Malaysia Digital Hubs, which are co-working spaces uh, all around Malaysia that we have um, identified as, as innovative um, workspaces that not just offer you know, a place to work, but it's also a place to connect and uh, uh, to engage with the community there through events, programs, accelerators, incubators, and so on. So to date, there is about 20, 20, 21 or 22 uh, such Malaysia digital hubs all over Malaysia, and uh, more will be added in the coming years. Uh, so briefly, that is uh, what I wanted to share in terms of the support and services that we have uh, uh, under uh, uh, the Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation or MDEC. Uh, so I thank you once again uh, for, for, for organizing this uh, and for your participation. Uh, 
you know, to the three companies that are pitching later. I uh, would like to wish you good luck and all the best. Um, over here, I've uh, uh, shared with you uh, my email. So if you have any queries, please uh, reach out to me uh, via email. Uh, and then follow us on Twitter where you'll be able to get the latest updates uh, on, on the programs that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation, Ryan. I have one question. Uh, the requirement for the startup visa is about like uh, 10 million uh, Malaysia ringgit. So how much is it in US dollars? Sorry, that's, uh, uh, sorry. So that's the third type. So that's actually for VCs. So, uh, uh, the 10 million ringgit, uh, uh -huh. that is for a VC that wants to apply uh -huh. for it. So it's not, not for the entrepreneur. So for the entrepreneur, uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. we only require 10,000 US dollars as uh -huh. of, of, uh, 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 in the bank. Yeah. Uh, but for, for a VC, it's 10 million ringgit, which is about 2.5 2 million US dollars. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's move on to the pitching session. So let me welcome the first presenter, this is Jun Lavo. This is Jun Lavo, uh, Chen. Hi. Hello. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen. And you can turn on your video as well. Okay. Can you see my screen? <laughs> yes, me too. Okay. So, hi, my name is Cheng Lok, and uh, I'm the head of business development from the Decision Labs. So the Decision Labs is actually a patient experience uh, management company. So right now, uh, okay, so next slide, okay. So patient experience is actually a universal issue. According to the New York Times, 23% of patients visiting hospitals face some kind of dissatisfaction. And one in three hospitals do nothing when patients complain. A research done by the Telegraph uh, UK and uh, two in five patients in Malaysia, especially OP patients, have some kind of dissatisfaction issue. Uh, done by uh, report done by UKMC Malaysia. So to summarize, right? So what are the experience challenges that uh, in a hospital environment? Hospital in the hospital settings, right? There's diverse requirement coming from uh, across patients, attendants, and visitors. Hospital trying to provide personal experience to every single patient. And of course, resourcing support staff round the clock at the help desk. Hospital always try to ensure highest patient satisfaction at all time. And the last but not least, distancing requirement in the post-COVID world. So with the demand side needs plus the supply side constraint and COVID-based environmental challenges, plus regulatory framework, it expedite the needs of patient experience uh, management solution. So I would like to introduce uh, the Decision Labs experience management uh, portfolio. So we have our flagship product, which is Sampia, focusing on patient experience, live service, which is focusing on service experience management, and click help, which is focusing on communication experience. Uh, due to the time constraint, I was just going to share two, uh, introduce, introduce to you two solutions. So I will just move on with uh, our flagship product, which is Sampia. Sampia has been in the market for uh, six years. And Sampia is a multi-channel, multilingual, digital patient experience management platform. Our solution actually helps hospital to understand patient experience at every touch point of the journey. We are offering our solution in 18 different languages, including Japanese, and we do have 10 different channels. So these are some of the channels that you can see right here, tablet, kiosk, QR code, SMS, email, desktop, website, social media, call center. So how does a Sampia actually works? If you look at this diagram, 
technically what SAPIA does is we collect patient experience at every stage and every touch point inside the hospital. The moment when you enter the entrance, register uh, on your registration, consultation, laboratory, diagnostic, even in patient room, cafeteria and discharge process. So the entire process, we actually monitor it and we actually patient can provide feedback at any point of time. And if there's any dissatisfaction, it actually, uh, it will have automatic triggers happening to the officer and they can take action. So here, that's how I bring you to the next uh, point where uh, our really uh, well accepted uh, complaint management system. So an unhappy patient when they raise a ticket, so instant ticketing go to the respective department and respective officer in charge. And then from there, if they do not take action within a certain SLA, escalation to senior officer. So which means their manager will get a trigger. So from the notification and the trigger, they can identify what is the patient issue, take action. And if uh, some hospital would like to have an instant process improvement verification by the customer service team beforehand, so that we can have that in the process. And once that is completed, communication back to patient. So it end up with a happy patient. So what we focus is uh, service excellence at every step. Sampia is an enterprise class solution. We have over 120 features. So uh, it is it's a very uh, comprehensive uh, uh, customer experience management platform. So moving to the next solution, which is uh, live service. So live service is actually got really popular during COVID and uh, a lot of hospitals are currently using it globally. So live service is an analytics embedded service experience management solution, which help patients to connect with hospitals seamlessly through various digital channels and get served real time. So from this diagram, I will show you how actually live service works. So when patient raise, uh, would like to raise a service request, they can raise it through various channel, QR code, mobile, or even tablet in the room and desktop. So there's no need to have a nurse, uh, the bell in the IP, or they, can go, they need to go to the reception counter. So they can request for services like doctor, nursing, housekeeping, food and beverage, so same process flow like the complaint management where instant ticketing go to officer. And then if uh, SLA uh, did not met, an escalation happened for the senior officer. And that ensures the delivery of service excellence because uh, everything is being monitored and tracked from the system itself. It ends up with a happy and satisfied patient. So the goal is to actually serve the patients and get the request closed before they leave the hospital premises. So the next one would be the potential uh, slide, uh, market size for patient experience uh, management. So apart from the US, UK, Australia, and New Zealand, patient experience solutions are virtually non-existence. Um, the expected uh, market size to reach by 2028 is worth USD 70.5 billion. And with COVID, uh, it has uh, from 2021 to 2028, the compound annual growth rate of this solution is 20, uh, an average of 21.3%. So I'm just going to share with you some of our achievements. So we have deployed our solution in seven countries, 42 cities, 136 plus hospitals, and we have already uh, collected 5 million interaction and 270,000 issue resolved within our systems. Below here, you can see some of the successful deployment that, uh, that we have uh, done for some of the very big client in Middle East, as well as in Southeast Asia. So this is some of the accolades uh, across continents. So uh, last year, we have been uh, awarded best patient experience platform in the Middle East Health Tech Innovation Summit. And uh, earlier this year, we also got interviewed by Forbes in terms of uh, to share about transforming patient experience during the COVID times. So this is the team. So uh, Anupam is our CEO and Abe is our CTO in the team and I'm actually leading the business development. So below is some of our mentor and advisor, which is helping us to get into a uh, different industry and how we could improve and develop our product further. So that's it. that is all from me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation, Chen. So okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, th uh, thank you for your uh, uh, 
pre presentation that is uh, inter interesting. So I have two questions. So one yeah. is about the same peer. It, it is a mm. fast solution. So in the process of installation, I found that there is a kiosk. So could right. you uh, tell about the, what, what is the kiosk? Kiosk is a hardware. Right. So I was wondering because the, the clinic must have the, some the hardware devices. Uh, correct, correct, correct. So this is, uh, a, uh, right. this is the first question. So another mm -hmm. question is about the the uh, the company the situations because your uh, companies is already deployed in the seven countries. So I thought that you might have the already have some the potential uh, some connection with with Japanese companies. So. So there are two questions from, from me. Thank right. You. Okay. So to answer Kiosk, right? So uh, we are actually, we, we can de uh, deploy our solution in Kiosk either to a application or through a web, web, app, web app. So what, because there is a Kiosk that is available for inside hospital or shopping malls, right? So you, we, can deploy, uh, we can integrate our solution into it. And, or we can even integrate a QR code into it where patients can actually scan the QR code and uh, give uh, provide feedback or request for service from there. So we do not uh, build the hardware. We are purely a software company. Okay, so yeah. the, if the Japanese clinic uh, starts to use your product a service solutions, so they can prepare the hardware in Japan. So they don't need to buy the hardware from the Mauritius. Yes, yes, yeah. We, we, we can work with any uh, Windows, Android, I, Apple, uh, okay. Kiosk, Tablet. Uh, there's, no, there, there, there's no problem. We can work with any operating uh, system. Okay, I understand. Thank you. And in terms of Japanese company, yes, uh, we have worked with, uh, uh, I'm sure you have heard of this company, Mitsui. So because previously they work with, uh, they are the investor of, uh, Colombia, Asia, as well as uh, Parkway Pantai. So we do work with them and um, we are also currently uh, uh, partnering with NTT Data Singapore uh, on a few engagement on Singapore Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the difference between Sampier and uh, Live Service Life service. The second one. Life service, yeah. Yeah, life service. So life service is more for the the uh, patient who is hospitalized already, right? Yes. So life service is focusing on service delivery, whereas Sampia is focusing on feedback complete <laughs> management. Okay, I yeah. see. Okay, I see. Hi, and uh, regarding Mitsui, so you are working with Mitsui Malaysia or Mitsui Japan? Come again. So the, are you working with Mitsui? So the Mitsui, with the, are you working with Mitsui Japan? No, so we work with Mitsui team which based in Malaysia. All right, I understand that. Because uh, so the Mitsui is a very good friend. So they, so if you try to expand the, the you know in in Japan, so they one 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 of the option is that we can also talk to the Mitsui here. Right. Right. Okay. So this is the opportunity. I already mentioned that. Right. And uh, uh, the, so come back to the services same here. For example, I'm in the hospital. I'm a patient. I'm ha unhappy. Mm. Yeah. I'm not satisfied with, with my doctor. Mm. So they, in that case. I have to use the app and uh, send a complaint to the senior guy of the hospital. Does it happen? And, uh, yes, you could do that, but uh, you not necessarily only through an app. It can be through a website. It can be through a, a QR code. It can be through different channels. App is just one of the channels. Yeah, because maybe because we Japanese, yeah. So the finally, yeah. So that maybe every day I talk to my doctor. Although I'm unhappy, I'm always smile. Yeah. But right. uh, in my mind, I'm unhappy. Yeah. Right. Instead of the complaint, this talk to the doctor directly, I use the app and sort of send the report to the senior guy in the hospital. 
Uh, I would say that maybe I, I would hate to do that. Right. What do you think? Yeah. Did, did you get the point? Uh, it, because the entire workflow and the entire uh, escalation, right, it is dependent on the hospital management, how they want to set it up. So uh -huh. it is very customizable. I see. Understand. Yeah. Okay, another two more questions. For example, you said the Japanese version of the same page is available. So they, we can download from the Google Play or the Apple Store, am I right? Yes, exactly. Okay, then how you can monetize that? Uh, we are actually, we are actually uh, charging uh, the hospital an annual subscription fees. We are a stats-based product, so we charge hospital on the subscription fees on, on our product. So patients use it for free, but the hospital would have to pay for the solution. Okay, I understand that. So mm. you, you are talking you are talking mm. hospital, but how about sort of the elderly care, nursing houses? Is that any possibility that yes. they, they also use that? Yeah, actually, right now, uh even clinics. Uh, nursing house, hospitals, or even right now there is a uh, insurance company, host hotels. They are reaching out to us for this solution post COVID. So it, it can be applied into be, be beyond healthcare industries. So we have only one minute left. So. As we are discussing, I think uh, we can uh, try to introduce your services to the Itzumo Sumairo. It's one of the, the they're offering the now elderly care uh, elderly care business, right. and also other one is the the, the university or the hospital. Right. Yeah. So we can talk to them and we'll see if they are interested in your uh, the solution. Sure. Yeah, because uh, we think the US service is very really easy to understand that, easy to install it, right? Mm. Mm. And uh, there's no complexity. And uh, nothing yes, no like class one, class two, right? So it's basically no, no need to have any license, right? Right. This is for the sort of the customer satisfactions. Mm. So the, I, I think that for, for the, the hospital and also this elderly care house, which Akiko mentioned, Mm. So they, they also, you have a Japanese version. And uh, I, I would say that they, they might have a you know, very quick interest in the services. Right. Yeah? So let, let us talk to these companies. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. This is this is our sort of a gift for the new year. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the next, uh, next presenter, uh, Graphico Asia. Um, hello, uh, can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Yep, and please turn on your video as well. Sure. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, Ohio gozaimasu. Good evening, everyone. I am Azrin, and today joining me is our founder, Mr. George and in corporate finance, Mr. Hyrie, uh, we are from Graphico. We offer our software to help large organizations digitize and track their assets in a virtual 3D environment. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the image data that we have processed. Using drones and 360 cameras to capture images, 
Um, our proprietary, proprietary technology converts these images into 3D models, which is uploaded into a virtual world platform. All right, so let's look. Um, so what we can do with this is we can process meaningful data and insights, helping inspection and maintenance. This makes for better and faster decision-making without leaving the comfort of your office. We save our clients millions of dollars and what takes companies years to identify problems and solve them, we can do in a matter of days. Today, many organizations face challenges. Our solutions are this, site digitization, visual and track assets, visual reporting and analysis. As an example, what I'm showing right now on the screen is a 3D model of the location that we processed. This, for this project, the city council wanted to upgrade the pavements for the city. The project was scheduled for three years to complete, but using our technology, engineers were given insight and beneficial information about uh, able to reduce uh, the completion to only one year and saving them 4 million ringgit. As another example, what you have here is an image process 3D model of a Kaiwan city in the Philippines. Using our same technology, we're able to simulate, stimulate, and predict areas that can be affected by flooding before a typhoon attack. So using this information, authorities can organize and plan a countermeasure, saving lives of many residences and saving millions in USD worth of crops. Uh, to name a few among our customers are the city councils, uh, environmental consultants, the industrial sectors, and in construction. You're probably asking yourself, isn't this similar to Google Earth? So why use Graphico? And that's a good question. You see, Google Maps provides you with an aerial view, but with a limited level of detail when you reach a certain height. What Graphical provides is the level of detail at one scan per pixel accuracy. So with this level of accuracy, visually, you can zoom in to identify cracks, uh, corrosions, and levels of detail not possible with Google Earth. In terms of timeline, Google Earth images are not always up to date, but with Graphical, we can deploy our teams out there to capture more recent data. And you won't just have present data in hand, you would have past data, and then you can compare them. With Graphical, you can implement customized local data connectivity into your maps. You can input and manage custom data into your models, connect CCTV, uh, networks, uh, monitoring sensors, and building libraries of information of your assets. Uh, we have international exposure um, listed down here. Um, among them are United Nations Center for Excellence for Smart Sustainable Cities. And we also have our uh, geotech in Singapore Land Authorities GeoWorks. Graphical is on a mission of sustainability to become a progressive solutions partner to enrich lives for a sustainable future for the countries and generations to come. We have already been granted as a business technology partner status by United Nations, uh, who won the AWS Global Game Changers Awards and also the Digital Governance Awards in 2020 in the Philippines. The market for geospatial analytics is about uh, 256 billion ringgit by 2028, but we're not stopping there. Our platform is able to capture the predictive maintenance and use machine learning and AI as tools as well. If you look at other players in the market, they're very specific to drones or specific GIS. What we have created is building something that is business friendly and easy to use. We can collaborate with Fukuoka Global Startup with business, enterprise, and local startups. We encourage collaboration by opening our platform to third party developers to capture the predictive and preventive AI markets. In regard to high level business models, our project model revenue streams from photo data capturing services, processing images and converting them into 3D visuals, 
and technology licensing to client department of our software, plus maintaining students. Our team has over 20 years of industry experience and we have been doing this for the last eight years. Our recommendations have saved cities millions of ringgit. And with that, thank you for your attention. Um, if, if we still have time, um, I would like to show you a quick live demo of our platform. Okay, yeah, you, you can have about two, yeah, two minutes. Just two minutes, it's very quick. Okay, so what you're seeing on the screen is our platform. On the left is the, um, the file managing tree. And on the right, we have tools to help you interact with the screen model. So um, for example, uh, I can zoom in into this product model right here. And I can measure exactly how big that is or what length and things like that. So this is just um, an example of a variety of tools that we have available. Um, I don't wanna to take too long to explain this. Um, our platform uh, loads from our servers, which means that you don't need a high end computer to be able to open these type of files that we have here. Um, and another thing to show you is um, um, we can uh, tag data. So just an example here. Uh, if I load up this block right here, so we can select the information that is located in this, in this area. So we can put in um, information like images, we can put in floor plans, um, even 2D maps of, um, let's say, CCTV floor plans. So uh, Mr. George and Mr. Hyrie and myself can answer any questions you may have. Uh, hi, uh, this is Yashir of the CSC. So uh, my question is that so the, if I have the data which I captured by myself, yeah. so, so I can use the, your software services and then so is there any special requirement so how to capture the data or so or anyone can um can capture data so the the data capturing is not limited yeah. to our team um we you can capture the uh, data yourself in terms of how it's captured um we do have a standard process that we use to be able to capture the data with high efficiency so obviously you can go out there and capture the data yourself but we've developed a way where capturing data is more efficient. So when we're able to process the data, we get very high end quality um, models. Uh, okay, so, so the, if the, some Japanese company wants to ask to generate the, the 3D maps, so if they have the data, so they can create the 3D map, right? Um, what, what we do is if they, if they have captured the data, they can yeah. send us the, the, the data to us and we will do the processing for them. So that's one of our services. So once we process the data, we can then uh, pass back the data to them in the 3D format, like what we have here on our platform. So to access their 3D data, they need to access, they have to use our platform. No, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, just to add on to that, um, the 3D images that is taken by the user themselves or the client and partners, um, they require certain skill. Um, but if you are looking at one building or very small area, then uh, it doesn't require much. But you are talking about a large area, a city size, then um, a special skill and knowledge is required. So uh, it's not that we don't want to open up these uh, things to the public or to the other user. Um, it's just that it's not as easy as what you think. But again, smaller area, anyone can do it. You, you said a small area, how big? It, 
Um, maybe like 10 acres or uh, less than 100, kilo, 100 meters square of area. Uh -huh. 10 hectares is one hectare. 100 meters. So 100 meter by 100 meter, 10 yes. hectares, right? 100 by 100. 100, 100. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, for example, the, I don't have a data, but I want to use the services in Fukuoka. What is the procedure? Uh, the data, the data normally is recycled. No, 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 I, I don't have it, okay? I don't have any data, but I, I like your services. I want to do something in Fukuoka. What is the procedure? Ah. So what we would like to do is understand the area that you want to cover. And if, um, let, let's make it a simple way. Uh, like the Kawan city that like Azrin has just mentioned, we don't fly our drones team there because it was COVID and the typhoon was come in three weeks time. So we, we teach the local drones flyer, a drone pilots to fly the area. And then after that, they send us a photo and we develop it. Uh, within three days, we are able to process the model uh, about a kilometer square of area. And that's how they start planning the flooding. So in your case here, if we have more plan, then we have to think of the resources, whether you are engaging our services or you have a local uh, pilot, uh, drones pilot services that you have, then we can teach them how to do that. Uh, and we will take in those images and process it on our site. Uh, at the end of it, the user will have uh, able to view the 3D model uh, through the URL we are providing to them. All right. So they, so in that case, you you give us a sort of the specification of the drone. Yeah. I guess. And, uh, yes. Yeah. And this drone, the how how high the it flies on the air. Um, 3D is different from area maps. Um, if you compare to Google, Google are flying 3,000 feet uh, above the ground uh, using aircraft. Today we are using drones and it's a rotor drones if you are looking at the 3D and detail. What Azrin has shown you or what you've seen on the screen here, we fly about 70 meters high. And of course it will not stay at 70 because there are high rise building things like that which is higher than 70. That's where you have to move up and down and uh, planning and skill is required. So uh, to get to detail, like what you see here is about 70 meters. Of course, we can go down to very, very low onto the ground as well. So um, it really depends on the applications that you want. We can do uh, what we have done for the past five years or so uh, from uh, disaster um, management from landslides, uh, to the city planning and as well as uh, maintenance and operations of the buildings. So these are the most of, a lot of applications on this area. And the resolutions and detaility are very different from each uh, industry and also the sectors. All right. So sorry. And because of the time, the limitation time, I have the two questions. First, so the, who is your existing customer? What kind of industry? Um, okay, from highway operators, uh, city many, uh, city councils, um, city, yeah. construction, constructions, uh, environmental specialists. Um, like in Japan, I think the insurance company will like this very much because you have to freeze the current conditions um, before any event uh, and any major event happen in Japan. Like um, I, I talked to Swiss RE before where Japanese government are buying insurance from them. So what they do is to capture the site where they have buy the insurance at that point of time. And if any disaster happen, they can recapture it and then start looking at what's the difference between the two, two time frames. Oh, That's I understand that. Yeah. Then, so when I introduce your service to the some company, how can I do that? Because for example, now you have a demo margin. This is very easy to understand that, but maybe we don't have demo margins. How, how to do that? Or by using just your pitch deck? Or is there any sort of you know, the demo margin which we can use that for, for the presentation on your behalf in Japan? Yes, we can do so. Uh, we've done that with, uh, uh, with uh, recently we've done that with the uh, China partners. So we provide them certain access. Uh, we are not fully implemented um, yet. 
Um, but yet we are open up uh, partners and um, also partners as in the resale partners and also partners for develop further on our platform to have uh, some use cases in certain sector. Okay, so uh, it's almost time. So we want to conclude our regard discussion. And we are thinking that uh, the one, one possibility is the Smart East. It's the Fukuoka Cities project. It's a smart city project. So I think it's have some synergy with your uh, solution. And as well as the one big uh, developer in Tokyo, I, I think that could be one of the possibility of your partner in Japan. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So let's just talk to the this, this, you know, the one the city government and the one the developer. So who is uh, developing the huge areas in Tokyo? Now there's a lot of you know the development the happening in Tokyo. Quite huge product. Okay. And uh, let's see. And uh, I, I like the product, but of course from the, the professional point of view. So the, once we get the feedback, uh, we we come back to you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah, for thank you. Uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we have the final startup for today. Uh, Smart Pete. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, can you guys see me? Okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, let me share my screen. Just thank one you. minute. All right. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yeah, we, we see, yeah, we see. Great. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Meng, and I'm the founder and CEO of Smart Peak. Um, let me start with my story. Um, five years ago, my grandma actually had a fall. Um, she stayed on the ground for hours before somebody found her. And since then, she was kind of afraid of walking again, like chose to stay on a wheelchair wherever she goes. Um, her condition continues to degrade, and unfortunately, a year later, she passed away. So my grandma's incident is just one of the millions of cases out there. So as world aging population is going to double in 2050, um, aged care facilities are mushrooming now and are mostly short of caregivers. Um, therefore, how do we keep seniors safe and healthy becomes a huge challenge. So traditional methods of preventing falls is to apply restraints on seniors to restrict their movement. But this method actually sacrifices their uh, mental health dignity and freedom in exchange for their safety. And very sadly, we are still seeing a lot of this in aged care facility nowadays uh, in Southeast Asia due to lack of caregivers. Um, in addition to that, we have seen too many cases where falls were not discovered in time, causing delay in treatment and leading to serious consequences. And we believe that technology could help to enable seniors to age safely one day. And that is how we, um, where we come in. So at SmartPeep, we leverage AI technology to facilitate senior monitoring. Um, we power up existing optical sensors with AI to track and detect anomalies using deep learning technology. And once an anomaly is found, our system will trigger an alert and produce a report for our further analysis. So this is our main product called the AI Elderly Sitter System. Uh, it's a system that is designed for hospitals, nursing homes, uh, aged care facilities to help elevating their nursing care quality. And usually we deploy a local AI server here um, to, to monitor 30 to 50 seniors at once, simultaneously. Uh, let me show you some demos on how it works. Suppose that in an aged care facility at night, we have a high forest senior trying to get out of bed without calling for assistance. So as he wriggles to the edge of the bed, our system detects this, notifies the nurse, so that she could actually rush to the room to help. And this is basically how our system helps preventing a fall uh, in each, each care facility. If a fall unfortunately happens within the facility, our system will also provide an alert. And the nurse can actually attend to this fall incident. So once the nurse arrives, the nurse response time is recorded and the alert got dismissed after recognizing her uniform. And this reduces actually time taken for rendering assistance. So in a daycare center, for example, a demented old lady may get up from a wheelchair while the nurse is actually focusing on other things in front of her. 
And our system also helps to notify the nurse before the fall happens. Um, we also help to keep track how long the senior has been using the toilet from a sensor outside the toilet. So once the door is closed, the timer started. And when it goes more than 15 minutes, an alert will be sounded to remind the nurse to check. And this is often how a fall in a toilet can be detected very quickly. So for higher privacy, our technology can also work with thermal sensors to detect falls, for example. Long toilet usage, somebody walk in a toilet for 30 minutes and didn't come out. And other features like bed fall prevention and all other features that we have shown you as well. So we basically bring values from four perspectives, greater safe, senior safety, quality nursing care, useful insights from reports, and we basically say costs for the hospitals, nursing homes, in terms of liability, productivity, and reputation. We adopt a software licensing business model where we operate in two modes, consumption mode, where we charge our client based on daily usage, and recurrent mode, where we charge our client based on number of sensors activated every year. So far, we have powered up eight hospitals, seven aged care facilities with our AI system across Singapore, Malaysia, and Australia. We have established a distributorship in Australia, and we'll be having our Malaysia and Thailand distributors coming on board soon. Our major clients include San Luke Elder Care and Parkway Pantai Hospital Group in Singapore, Ramsey Saim Dabi Healthcare Group in Malaysia, and RSL Life Care Retirement Village Group in Australia. In terms of the outcome, this is what we have achieved so far. 61% faster response to falls, 72% reduction in falls within the facility, and almost 50% of the facilities have zero fall rate after using our system. And there's been more than 7,000 nurse assistants that has been facilitated by our system uh, up to 2021. Um, we have a great team of 12. We have the expertise in AI and product development to make this happen. We used to work with Microsoft Research Asia, F-Secure, Avira, JobsDB, and Autodesk. Over the last two years, we have backed several awards, the recent ones being a Kazana Impact Innovation Challenge in Malaysia and a Healthy Aging Prize for Asian Innovation in Japan. We have also been extensively featured on the media, such as the Age Singapore, uh, the Age Malaysia, and TEDx Telling Street in Malaysia. Our company vision is to enable better health, safety, and well-being for the seniors with AI technologies. And we want a world with less senior falls and injuries, even when we are short of caregivers. And through this program, we hope to form partnership with interested distributors and solution integrators in Japan. Uh, for healthcare clients who are interested, um, they are welcome to. Lastly, my name is Meng from SmartPip. We revolutionize elderly care with AI. Thank you. So I'm, I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you so much for your presentation, man. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, let me ask the uh, question. So, so how about the, the camera? So, so do you provide the camera to detect the, the fall? So uh, uh, I, I think uh, it's the same for, 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 for other companies. We, we, just like other companies, we are just software company. So uh, we are making our software to be uh, compatible with, with uh, other hardware out there, camera hardware out there. So it's, we, we, it's actually hardware agnostic. We can use any uh, IP cameras, any thermal sensors, and we'll just look our software to enable um, the monitoring. Okay, uh, thank you for your answer. And then I have another question. So, sure. you, so you, your business already entered into the three countries, so Malaysia, Singapore, the Australia. So, so I was one, uh, so I, I would like to know the, the feedbacks from the, them. So, the good point and also the challenges is so bad side. So um, every time before we, we, we started, uh, I mean, I mean, this monitoring will always go through a trial. So uh, some of the feedback that uh, we have received so far um, include because we have uh, successfully detected some falls and um, they bring down the reduction. So they, they, they do see, see the impact of this technology compared to the traditional sensors, bit sensors, for example, or the floor mat sensors that they are um, um, using before. So um, they are pretty satisfied with this. And uh, some of the monitored seniors or patients comments would be, hey, how come every time I come out of bed, um, the nurses actually caught me and actually uh, 
like render assistance to help me. I mean, that, that's a very feedback from the hospital point of view. Um, uh, they, they never would imagine that a nurses would know actually, even though I, I, I don't really press the call bell. So um, that, that, is, that is one of the comments. And there, there were actually a lot of falls that happens in, in, in the midnight, especially. Um, um, for example, in, in one of our local nursing homes, um, there were falls that happened every day uh, before our systems move in, uh, in a room because it, it was too huge and they, they are really short of caregivers. And after we implemented our system, um, they are, the, the fall reduction, actually, you can see that there's no fall at all. I mean, after two weeks of uh, implementation. So, so that's, that's, the, that's the really drastic drop in, in the fall reduction rate uh, after installing the system. Um, and we have managed to caught several um, falls uh, 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 in the outdoor situation of the nursing home. Um, that really helps them to actually prevent it. Um, I mean, discovering it, really shorten the time of discovering it uh, compared to, I mean, without the system. So that, that's something that we, we actually uh, heard from our clients itself. Okay, thank you. Okay. If uh, there are any nursery homes in Japan, they, uh, they would like to try your, uh, the services. Will it be, do you have any plans for the pilot project with them or? Yeah, actually we are, we are, we are trying to engage uh, partners in, in Japan, but uh, we, are, we, are, we are always looking for, for a route to uh, move into Japan market. Um, probably, I mean, with the thermal sensors technology, or even with some uh, common areas with, with our, our cheaper RGB cameras technology. I mean, it, it all works with this, but uh, we, are, we are looking for a reliable partner because language is, has always been a problem when, when dealing with uh, Japanese uh, nursing homes. Yeah, so this is something that uh, we are looking for. Mm, I see. And uh, uh, that just confirms that your technology uh, detects a sort of a strange motions. How about the voice or the sort of the screaming? Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I've uh, got your questions correctly. Um, you are it, saying it, that... For, yeah, for example, somebody on the bed. Yeah. Yeah. And but, uh, they, they are not so... Uh, may, may, maybe they have some problem. They don't yep. move but maybe they scream, the voice. Does your system have a voice detection or not? I just want to confirm that. Yeah, uh, currently we do not have our, uh, the voice detection yet. Only motion, okay. Only, only yeah, only based on uh, visual, computer vision, yeah. And uh, you are you talking to the, any Japanese company already or not yet? Uh, we are actually engaging one of the, it's called, I think it's called uh, Sujitsu. So, uh, so, just, so, just, so just, yeah, so just. Yeah. So that that's uh, one company that that um, so we are actually engaging uh, currently. All right, and uh, so and uh, Mitsui, so mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah. similar, you know, the competitors, <laughs> and uh, they are competitors. <laughs> but we are very good friend of Mitsui, and we are also good friend with uh, so just. I see. Yeah. So they, uh, but uh, we have uh, one company in our mind, and uh, they might they might have interest. Uh, Akiko, can you explain that? Yeah, like uh, I think I already mentioned their name, like with the first, yeah, uh, with the decision last but it's called It's a Smile. They are having, I think they have many like uh, nothing homes. They are running nothing homes. Maybe thirty yeah. or fifty, maybe. Oh, well, that's, that's yeah, good. And they're like, uh, willing to try something new technology. So I think uh, they will be the, our first I mean, the candidate for you to collaborate with. So, and you, your services are quite easy, uh, quite clear to understand. So let us uh, uh, let us introduce your service to It's Most Mouth, then I'll get back to you with their feedback. Thanks a lot for the new year present. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great, great. Okay. So, yeah, I'll get back to you with the feedback. Yeah, I, I think so. When we talk to the It's More Smile, so they give us a very precious feedback. They said, Oh, this sub is great, or it looks good, but it, it doesn't work, for example, for some reasons. Sure. That's why. So, whether the reason is good or bad, so we will definitely come back to you. Yeah. Sure, sure. You, yeah, we are, we are quite confident with the technology because we have, we have done several large scale implementations before with this. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's, yep, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so we are now done with all the program for today. So thank you again. So thank you so much for part of your participation, everyone. And we posted the feedback for this event in chat box. So please feel some minute to give us your feedback and we can improve our event in the future. So thank you again for your time and see you soon in the next event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks.